Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bearded Tech. My name is Matt, and today I wanted to look at doing the Force Break mod on the Mons Geek M1. Now, in my previous video, we assembled the Mons Geek M1. It's an awesome keyboard, especially for any beginners out there. Um, and one of the benefits is that it comes with a bunch of mods that you can do. So we did the tape mod originally when we were installing it the first time. And what I wanted to do now is actually a video on the force break mod. Uh, this is a mod that I find a little harder to find details on. People talk about it a lot, how much they love it. However, there isn't a lot of details on it itself. So even looking at the Mons Geek packaging, making sure you know which pieces are for the force break is uh, important. So. What the force break mod is, is basically around all of these screw points. You put what some people have as tape, um, or if you saw in the beginning of the video, what Mons Geek provides with you is kind of these little pads um, that have adhesive on one side. And in theory, what that's going to do is help change the sound. We all know that we're looking for the best sounding keyboard we can. It's not just about feel. We want the thing to sound really, really good. So we're going to apply these little kind of pads all around the frame where the screws go into the board. So here I am just undoing the back of the board, making sure that um, I can get it open. Make sure you untighten all your screws as much as you can the first time so that they come apart nice and easy. So once you get your board split apart. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the cable so that we can use these two pieces separately. And then what you're going to do is grab your tape or your little pads that came with the Monskeek M1, for instance, and all around the board, wherever you have a screw hole, you're going to put the tape or the pads on each side that you can fit a piece of this in. And what that's going to do in theory is create less ping when you're using your keyboard. So I think this is something that you might see more common with the aluminum chassis keyboard. I don't think you get necessarily as much ping with like a plastic case, but in theory, this will help you get that stocky sound that everyone's looking for. So after you have all your little pieces of tape or padding in place, you're going to put the board back together, remarry the, the top and the bottom of this, and tighten it down. Now one of my concerns was how much of a gap is this going to create when you're done putting the pieces back together. And it's really important that you tighten this down and I'll show you here in a second that I didn't really see a huge difference or a huge gap in the board itself, but really I think we're all willing to pay for maybe a slight gap even if the sound is going to be better. So you'll see here after we get the board together showing you each side no real visible difference to what it was before we did the mod. And then we're going to flip it over, give it a couple of taps, make sure everything's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a sound test for before and after. And you guys let me know if you hear a difference. So that's the force break mod on my Mons Geek M1. Let me know in the comments. Did you hear a difference? Didn't you hear a difference? 
I think it's a worthwhile mod if you're looking for a little fine tuning on getting a maybe a lower sound. Again, it's there to get less ping. So if you have an aluminum chassis keyboard, maybe it's a great way for you to get a little closer to that perfect sound. I appreciate the support everyone's shown me uh, even over my first video. So please like, comment, subscribe, continue to show your support, and I will continue the content coming.